So the reason why I'm showing the RHIT is because it has value, it has merit, it has weight. Okay, now what I do want to show you here is the RHIA, right? So let's do an RHIA program, okay? So when I think of RHIT, RHIT, again, the courses alone for Valencia is enough to get to you, get for you to be in a management position, all right? Um, a coding and a management position with experience. If you're looking at a bachelor's, I, I think a bachelor's with an RHIT, RHIA, I'm sorry, would, would potentially get you to, you know, a director level position. Okay. And while we're at it, if we're looking at a master's level degree, then you're looking more into administration, corporate level type of uh, work. Now I've seen I've seen RHIAs without master's degrees become you know CEOs. That's great, um, but now you see a trend in where if you want to get into administration, you need to have a master's, and you see it provides that merit. It provides that weight for you be able to for you to be able to sit in that position. Now let's take a look at some of the bachelor's program. I'm going to take out Bryant's. I forgot the name of the college already. Uh, let's go back to Florida because again I am just picking Florida because I'm, I'm aware of the programs. Let's just go over the bachelors, okay? So I'm aware. So there's only three. There's only three in the state of Florida that offers the baccalaureate degree. You have Florida A&M University. You have Kaiser University. And you have um, University of Central Florida. Now, let's take a look at University of, uh, you know, let's just take a look at FAMU. FAMU is a college out in Tallahassee, Florida, which, by the way, I have interviewed a, a graduate from the program. Her name is Erica. Uh, please check that out. I will um, kind of reference the podcast episode there. From what I understand, based upon my mentoring with the student uh, who graduated from here, it is a very, 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 very rigorous program. Okay, so this is the home of the Rattlers. Uh, let's, I know I have to, um, there we go. All right, so here's the health information, health informatics and information management program. Um, again, look, you see here, you know that it's accredited by the same association here. Okay, uh, let's take a look at the program, if they have it. All right, let's take a look at UCF. Here's it. There it is. There we go. Okay. So with lots of searching, <laughs> I found the UCF um, UCF curriculum for the bachelor's program okay now if you see here there's a lot of similarities you see let me make it bigger so you guys can see it all right so there's a lot of similarities in your junior so these are some of the prerequisites and anatomy physiology which you get in your associates level okay uh, statistics, which you get. So let's say example, Valencia and UCF, they are actually uh, associated colleges, so you can actually transfer over. Uh, so you have statistics, financial accounting. This is something that you would have to add on that you didn't see in the, in the associate's level degree. So this is higher level. You have to understand budgets and, and so much more than just supervisory. You're now management and director level ship. So you need to get some of these accounting courses in which, boy, the, when I took this, uh, when I was in college, I mean, it was just a pain in the butt. And I know um, for my the person that I mentored, Erica, when she was at FAMU, this was one of her courses that gave her such a hard time. All right. So here 
you know, you, in your junior year, you see some of the stuff that are very, 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 very similar. Foundations of HIM, fundamentals of HIT, medical terminology. Uh, I don't know what this is. Organization and management, healthcare, something. So this is more like a HSA course, like a health services administration. This is a health science, looks like a mathematics class, which you've already taken in the, uh, in the associate's level. Here is management of organization. So it's a little bit more higher level management that is on top of an RHIT degree. Uh, let's see, fall semester, here is your spring semester, coding, health record organization management, professional experience, health data management, which again, you probably have seen on an associate's level, but then remember that this UCF, a bachelor's program, is preparing you for the RHIA, which is totally different scenarios, higher level, I would like to say higher level in, in where you are in position. You're not necessarily an analyst, a um, supervisor. Now you're looking more into directorship, okay? Uh, health law, which I think you probably have taken, you know, in this, in, it, it might transfer, who knows? Principles of healthcare reimbursement, insurance, managed care plans, right? Uh, fall semester, HIM department, HIM systems, quality management, outpatient procedure, coding and reimbursement. This is probably your CPT courses uh, and HICSPIX, professional development issues and HIM, healthcare finance. Oh boy. You know, these are things that you would not think to take, you know, if you're just thinking about just being a medical coder, but now you have to think about, well, finance, accounting, management. This is, this is like a, a next level degree to get you into administration it helps you prepare these are like your prerequisites to administration okay uh, internship or, or orientation management affiliation for the summer so these are all things that are required uh, so very similar in in valencia's program i wish i had not deleted out do i have it now in in uh, valencia's program but you see here it, you could tell that you could tell that the the type of classes for an associate's level program versus a bachelor's level program will only take you to more of a different level position so coder hit analyst right then you're looking at supervisor team lead maybe that's an rhit type of um level position, but I've seen RHITs become CEOs. You know, it, it comes with experience. If you have experience with a degree, you could always, it always takes you higher and wherever you need to go. Bachelor's level, you see the managerial courses, the finance courses, the health services administration courses. Um, I know how to take a lot of those courses, but yes, you see that it opens your view, as I mentioned in the mentoring session, is just, you know, doing a job function. Now it all, it should widen out your view because when you become a director, uh, not so much an HIM director, but if you move up in a more higher level managerial position, you need to be aware of different departments that are around you. You also have to know that your department reports to a higher level. And in most cases, this will be uh, the Department of Finance, the CFO. So you definitely need to know how to speak their language. The same thing, if you want to be a CDI, you need to get your pathophysiology, your uh, disease processes, your anatomy, physiology, your pharmacology, you know, under under your belt and under you have to understand it in order to speak it in order to to deal to communicate with those type of uh, professionals so you see all of these courses here these are things that you have to be very mindful of okay so hopefully that will give you an idea uh of the differentiation of you know just getting a coding credential which is fine because you're going to perform that function uh, you can be a consultant, uh, a private, you could own your private business, which I see a lot of, um, credential coding, uh, certified credential coders become, uh, what else? If you want to be an RHIT, you see where the levels move up. And if you want to get into uh, a bachelor's, that's where you want to go. Now let's take a look at, um, master's degrees. Now, again, I'm only focusing on Florida because 
I can attest to it. Health information. Let's do both. Now, the thing is, in Florida, you don't see health information management masters. You see mostly health informatics. So let's go into health informatics master's degree. Okay. And one of the ones that is my alma mater, FIU. So I did graduate with a health information management degree from FIU. But if you note here, let's do it again. Uh, you see that FIU is not listed with a bachelor's program because I believe back in 2000, here's a little bit of history, back in 2008, they actually phased out the program. I don't know what happened. I don't know... Um, but for some reason, around that time when the when the market crashed, uh, they took it out. But they reinstituted this health information master's health informatics master's degree. So let's take a look at that. I've seen <laughs> I've seen a lot on Facebook, so I might as well uh, take a look at this. Right. So here's a 15 month fully online program. Let's take a look at what it's all about. Maybe it kind of gives me an idea of what I need to look at here. If you, the following 11 courses are required for the uh, MSHIA degree for, look at this, uh, College of Business. It's not in anywhere in health. Let's take a look at that. HIM Quality Outcome Analytics, okay? Healthcare Database Systems. All right. Health Information information security and privacy very interesting uh I, I think if if i were to at least take one course i would want to take a look at that course very closely because you know when you look at uh i think we've talked i've talked about this in previous podcast episodes where oh yes with um shirley moy uh and her company but one of the biggest uh one of the biggest programs is computer science and one of the biggest uh sub sub programs out of the that program is uh computer science computer security so when you integrate it with health information security and privacy this is a great course healthcare data data visualization i'm sure this is more than just an excel spreadsheet program uh, learning how to take your statistics, your reports, and visualize it, make you making it visual with certain programs. Introduction to Health and Health Informatics, I think it would do great. Oh, QMB 6357, Business Statistical Analysis. Oh, boy, I don't know. Uh, clinical Information Systems, I would definitely uh, like because I've worked with um, Epic a lot. I'm aware of what is required to build a clinical information system with a nursing unit, use nursing department, laboratory, radiology, and then even with all of those things implemented, how do they connect and work together? Uh, technical and data architecture for standards in healthcare. Yes, trying to build a database because one of the biggest things now is and you see how i'm talking about it now with maturity because i've had experience in it and i see why this course is very important because when you're trying to build a database with data architecture what you're leveraging is all of the electronic health record data that has been built upon for many years how do you deal uh, take that data build a database okay and build that database so that way you can develop more standards for healthcare that's how I see that course. Legal and ethical aspects of healthcare is just probably an update on all the stuff that I've taken uh, with term and definition and papers and et cetera. Oh boy. Healthcare project management. I think this would be a great course because I've seen, I've been interested in, in looking into project management. So healthcare project management may take me some areas beyond that. I just think project management is great. Uh, something that I've always wanted to look at, Foundations of Health and Analytics Administration. And then the following courses required for MSH, uh, MHHIS, MSHIA degree. This is Health Information Capstone and also a Health Informatics Analytics Practicum. So you see, oh boy, just a lot of work. The reason why I'm kind of cringing is because, you know, when I think of my schedule, all right, and how this would work, how many classes do I have to take? You know, these are things that you worry about. And I'm sure you worry about this with your, um, 
you know, when you think about getting into an HIT, you know, an associate's level program, a bachelor's program, you know, trying to get into thinking about just going, let's say, for example, AAPC or getting into their, their courses, how it's going to fit, you know, when you look at also tuition, how much you got to pay, um, is your employer going to pay, et cetera. And also things like, okay, when I finish these courses, what's what's it going to do for me? And And most people think that, you know, when you finish your degree, it's like, okay, well, if I finish my degree, what job am I going to get? I'm not so worried about the job that I get. I think, you know, as I, as I mentioned before, you know, with these programs here is what does it that you learn from the program itself and what can you take from that program and run away with. I can see a bunch of things that I can run away with. HIM 62, 65, 27, I can run away with uh, and and just take whatever I learned and just kind of go in that direction. Maybe I want to go into project management. All right, so um, what was I saying? Oh, yes, I can take HIM 65, 17 and take healthcare project management. I can work for a, let's say, a software company and become a project manager, you know, uh, these are things, and then probably get my what was it the the PMP, uh, some license certification for project management, and take this course and kind of run away run away with it. Legal aspects and ethical aspects of healthcare. Shoot, you could take that and go into the OIG, uh, work for fraud and abuse. You see, there's different directions that I want to go with this, um, and so when you think about again. What job can I get? Do you see the potential opportunities that I just listed there? So, and, and it just takes from one course itself. So you could apply this with the associate's level program, the bachelor's level program. You could literally take one course out of that program and kind of run with, run away with it and see where you want to go. But the thing is with me is like I've, I, when, I, when I finished my um, bachelor's program, uh, I, I definitely wanted to get into electronic health records. Did that happen to me? No. And and what happens is that it something else came into my lap, and that's where you know I kind of ran with that for a really long time, and I did very well. I'm I'm still doing well right now. Now, do I still have time to pivot after 20 years of healthcare uh, to move into another direction? Possibly. Yes. The sky is the limit. Again, as I mentioned, you know before, even though this year is my 20th year in healthcare, I still feel like I still can do some more. So, wow, this has been a really long, <laughs> a really long self-discussion. Um, I do want to thank you guys for listening to me babble about uh, associate's level degrees, uh, Kahim, accredited programs, um, associates in HIT versus medical billing and coding, um, bachelor's level program, and also your master's level program. So if, if any of this discussion helped you out, please like this video, please subscribe to this channel, please share this video with somebody who is on the fence on a educational program in medical coding or HIT. So with that being said, thank you guys for watching and I'll see you guys in the next video. Medicalcodinggeek.com